Cruz. It was another lovely day today, and the timing couldn't have been perfect. Paul, you're always number one. You seem to be always the first person. You have good notifications. So this morning, the timing to go up Del Delaware Bay was, was first thing in the morning, which is perfect for going a longer distance. And hello, hello, honey pot. Uh, good, let me think, good afternoon to you. So here I am. I had a, a lovely trip up the bay. There was there was good wind for, for about half of it. And it wasn't too much because wind in Delaware Bay don't don't agree with each other at all. It's uh, it's the actually it's the worst place to, on the east coast to go boating. And so that 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 potential terror is, is over. Uh, here's a quick look back. I'm having to pay attention. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, Greg. It's, it's after 12 here. I don't know where you are. There's some, some lovely bridges over this canal. Um, it's the weekend, so there's a lot of uh, boat activity, which means I'm always watching out. Um, there's motorboats that come downstream from Philadelphia, and they go to Chesapeake City and have lunch or have dinner, and then scoot home. And, and given that it's... Uh, a Sunday, they're probably not staying for dinner. Um, so anyway, the uh, well, if you catch the current right in Delaware Bay, you get a good shot. And and if you don't catch the current right, then you better not be going because it's lousy. Uh, autopilot course change three degrees to the right. Um, so the view on the left, guess what? It's the same as the view on the right, but we're looking at the sun. Uh, I've run I've run through here in the dark before because you have to go through here with the current. It just started to, to, to go west, and I'm headed going along at two uh, at 7.2 knots. What's that? What's that? I can't see. It's a, it's a crying it's a crying face. Why did I get a crying face? So there's a little bit of current helping, and as I go west more and more, the, the ebb tide will be, be picking up, and I'll get sucked right along. And there's a stopping point. Let me check. There's a stopping point nine miles ahead. Well, that's a laughing face. And and I'm not stopping at the stopping point because guess what? Everybody will be stopping at the stopping point and it fills up. And then you get people coming in late. And if they arrive in the dark, even worse. There's no room and they try to find a place and there's no place. I've seen this happen multiple times. So no stopping at the stopping point. I'm going to carry on. The day is young. I have I have a nice little place to myself because the chart shows a very shallow number and nobody goes in there. But I'm a little crazy, and if the if the, if the shallow number is kind of close to what I can manage, hello, hello, who I'm saying hello to, Jesse. Oh, good to see you. Hi, Mindy. Good to see you too, Mindy. Good morning, Mindy. Are you, uh, Mindy? Are you still doing your old your old job, or is that? Uh, that get put on hold for a while. So what we have is is the CND canal was was built for. The, yes, helps me a little crazy. I'm I, I'm not. I wouldn't say. I guess I should say eccentric. I also like to explore. Is it easier in this boat or your last boat in shallow water? Um, this boat draws six more inches. So uh, I think Paul, the distance is. Whoa. So I think it's about six, eight, seventeen miles, eighteen miles. So when I came in here, it's about eleven to Chesapeake City, and then it's a little while longer to get out. Um, and I've lost my train of thought. So, so there we are. Uh, so along the sides of the canal are is a dirt road, and you can in most places, in several places, you can you can gain access to it and drive. Uh, so what they've built here is a fishing pier. And, and the fishing pier has seen better days and, and it's, it's pretty much washed away. So you can't, you can't walk up in the fishing pier anymore. Um, what happens in, in storms is the water level comes up and, and over and every, all, the, all the boards you would stand on float away. I'm a little distracted right now because they have to make a little course change. Three, four, five, six, seven. Look at all these happy people bicycling along. 
the temperature, no one's asked yet, but the temperature is is probably close to 65 degrees, or for those of you farther away, it's about 19 or 18. And as you can see, the sun is, is fully out, there's a light breeze. It's just uh, just gorgeous. But um, the C&D Canal, this is this, this some interesting geographical misnomers. So, so the first one is Cape Cod. Cape Cod is, Cod is part of, uh, yeah, no shoes Sunday. I just took my shoes off. Oh, it is beautiful here. So Cape Cod used to be a cape until they put the Cape Cod Canal through it. Now it's an island. But no one, no, no one renamed Cape Cod to Cod Island. So the same thing happened here. Here's the, the CD Canal for the Chesapeake and Delaware Bay Canal. So I'm, I'm in Delaware right now. Over here is Delaware, and they call this the, the Delmarva Peninsula. Well, alas, the, the canal has, has eliminated the peninsula and made it into an island. But no one calls it Delmarva Island. So, so oh well. Um, I had my radio on channel 13 and 16. 13 is the one that this is a this is a regulated canal because ships will go through here, large ships and tugs and, and barges, and they all have to check in with the uh, the guy the guy by Chesapeake City sits in a little building and watches the screen and talks on the radio and if the ship checks in then he can tell it if there's anybody coming the other direction any anything large anything small you're on your own so I'm listening to 13. I know there's no one coming from behind, because I could, I could see that. And I know there's no one coming from in front in the short term, but I couldn't see on the uh, on my data that shows where ships are. I couldn't see how, you know, if, they're, if they're still approaching the west end, I couldn't see that. So it's always good to listen to Channel 13 and the canal. You might learn something that's useful. Um, there's a little interesting uh, thing going on. Uh, one boat behind me, it was in front of me. Have you scoped this section first before? I have, Mindy. And I've had mixed results with my with my internet data. It is probably just fast enough to do it. So it seems to be working today. Um, all these canals aren't built straight. They, they have bends in them. So in a violent storm, the waves don't don't build up for 10 miles. They, they have to hit a bend and, and dissipate a little bit. So, because this is, this side is an island, you have to get across to it by bridges. So, back of, behind me, uh, well, you can't see it anymore because I've hit a bend, but there's a whole bunch of power wires. You can see the power, the power towers that help supply the, uh, this, this piece of, this island, even though it's called a peninsula, this island with, with electricity, and we're coming up another bridge. Uh, there's one interesting bridge, instead of carrying, uh, there's one bridge for trains, and that one obviously has to go up and down. It's usually up because trains don't come through too often, it's only freight trains. Uh, there's one bridge that carries pipes. I think they're, they're gas pipelines. Um, it's easier to suspend them than it is to, to bury them, apparently. So I have to look out over here. The uh, there's lots of boats. This is this is the migration. This is like the peak migration season for for boats. And and these two boats were were well in front of me uh, this morning when I when I started out at, at seven in the bay. Uh, but they somehow man decided managed I think decided to take a longer route and and instead of going from straight point to straight point they they kind of took a longer route and I've closed up the gap and we're all going at about about the same speed which is a little strange because they're bigger and they should they should be still going faster uh, earlier in the day when they were in front of me they were going faster so so I think they're out in the deeper channel where the ships travel in the, in the Delaware Bay and uh, it had a little more current but now the last I checked is one of them this is this is the joy so Anybody that's curious, you can do this whenever you want. You, you can go to marinetraffic.com 
and that will show you all the ships and tugboats and everybody that is within range of, of a receiver that's part of the marine traffic network. It will show you where they are, their name, how fast they're going, what heading they're on, sometimes their destination. Uh, sometimes it will say if they're, they're moored or anchored or, or, or you know, what their characteristics are, their length. Uh, all kinds of interesting information. So one of these ships is, is transmitting that AIS signal and I can receive it and see how fast they're going. So you must be on there. Uh, I'm not transmitting. I'm not a, I, I could turn on my AIS transmitter, but there's no reason to. Uh, it's, it's for collision avoidance. And um, I can see what's coming, so there's no reason to turn it on. Um, it's also, you can track people that way, but it's really for collision avoidance. And 10 degrees to the left, and so we get to go underneath some this, this cool bridge, this older one. Uh, you can see I'm driving, so to speak, boating on the wrong side of the road. Naughty, naughty. Don't tell anybody that works for the police because I'll be in big trouble. I do like to, uh, to to take the wrong side when the when there's a bend. I try to go in as straight a line as possible. Oh my goodness, honey pot, honey pot, don't look. Put your hands over your eyes. I'm on the wrong side of the road. So there's nobody coming. Uh, I have been surprised on the wrong side by by a tugboat and a big barge or sometimes a ship. In which case, it depends where... Yes, you're watching. No, don't watch. So you haven't hit anybody yet. So Mindy, you drive on the left side of the road, do you? I don't know. Are you French? No. Are you from the UK? No, you said you're from JK. Just kidding. Um, so anyway, I have encountered big big vessels in here. Um, they tend to, they're supposed to stay in the right, but they tend to shift more to the middle. It's a little easier for them. So depending where I'm at, I scoot to one edge or the other just so there's no, no cause for concern. Because there would be ship one and little sailboat zero. Uh, yes, Paul, there's, there's two. There's two. See all this I had some young people on my boat last summer, and one of them said, there's so many ropes. Well, yeah, <laughs> there are a lot of ropes. I have an extra sail and all kinds of, of stuff. Um, so these boats should be, should be pulling ahead. They shouldn't be, I shouldn't be catching up to them, but they might be motoring a little slower. Uh, uh, Paul, there's a funny story with that, but I have to change my course first. I asked for 10 degrees, I hope it's not too much. I'm going to get awfully close to that, that banking. Uh, so I was anchored a few days ago behind Coney Island for several nights. And it filled up. I mean, I've never seen anybody but me in there. And, and one night, there were four boats. One of them was a motorboat. And the next day, when I looked out very early, I looked out very early and he was gone. Well, come to find out, that was an old friend of mine who... We've, we've run across each other in, in multiple states. He, he almost, I think he almost holds the record. He's, all, he's like number two the places I've run, run into. Um, so that's where I ran into Roger. And so Roger got a jump on me by a day. Um, and he was down in Cape May and tried to go yesterday morning. And the wind was out of the north, blowing about 20. And, and north, north 10 is, is my limit. So he, he found the waves were too big and turned around, came back, and I arrived yesterday, so I drove, drove past his boat where it was anchored, waved, said hello, went off to my own place to anchor. So Roger jumped, jumped ahead of me this morning. He left at 6 and I left at 6.15. And his motorboat's just a little bit faster. So, so I could see him as a speck in the distance all day. And... I don't think I'm going to see him now. I think he's always going to be around one of these bends. Um, let me change my course a little bit. I'm going to go right past this concrete post, bridge, bridge support. He has 
a spot tracker, which you have to pay a monthly subscription for, and it transmits to satell a satellite. And I can look on the web page, and every 10 or 15 minutes I can see, as long as it's turned on, I can see where Roger is. So when I came into this canal, I could see that he had already gone past the first bridge and, and was ahead. So we had our last chat. I might pass what he's stopping for tonight, because I'm, I'm planning to go a little bit farther. Um, so yeah, we, we, I'm not traveling with Roger, but because we're both doing our own thing. But to answer your question, I am with, I'm not exactly with a buddy boat, but I do have a buddy in a boat <laughs> in, in front of me. Uh, I've, I've always enjoyed meeting him. Roger is an interesting person. He's, he's been retired for a while. He used to live in Portland, Maine. But because of love, he moved to New York. New York, not New York City, but the uh, country part of New York, and near the Hudson River. And he used to be a naval architect and designed and had, you know, he designed a lot of research vessels. So he has contacts along the coast where his research vessel, one of them that he's had, he designed and, and was constructed. I gotta check my, my course here because I'm turning. You can see at the bottom of these, these bridge abutments how the current's swirling. There, we're in the shadow for a second. If it was a hot day, I'd appreciate the shade, but I don't care. It's nice. The temperature is very nice. So anyway, he's, he's designed uh, research vessels, and one of them is used by the island next to the one I work at, or at least I try to work at. It wasn't open this year. It's, it's Star Island. It's next to Alpador, and one of their boats is his, and they needed his expertise uh, a long time ago, decades ago. So he's... Uh, he went down in a in a in a diving a diving sphere, and he's seen in person. He's seen the Titanic in person, and, and I have to say, not many people have seen the Titanic in person, at least recently, and that is still alive. So that's that's damn impressive. And he's a he's a very nice guy. Um, he's also, but what's the what's the little is it a smiley? No, it's, a, it's an oh, oh, oh face, okay. Um, he's also, he, he is more eccentric than I am. He likes exploring odd places more than I do. So one year, he was in, uh, in contact with some, some school that has an oceanographic program, and, and he got a whole bunch of sample bottles my destination, south, yes, I'm going south. I, I don't know what, exactly where I'm going south yet. That, that has yet to be determined. Somewhere in Florida. Um, so Roger got these, these sample bottles. He said he's going up to the Bay of Fundy. He's going to sail around the Bay of Fundy, and he'll, he'll lower the sample bottles down on a string. And they, they you have about six, six bottles on a string, and they're triggered for different depths. So he lowered them down, and once the string is out, they, as they, they get triggered, they take on some water. And then he'd pull them up and label them. And he just sort of decided to sail around the Bay of Fundy uh, randomly. Which, which there's, there's very few places where you, when you leave the Bay of, you know, when you leave from a port in the Bay of Fundy, the current there is so ferocious that you, you have to have a destination in mind that goes in, in the direction of the current. It's like this canal, it, it runs very swiftly. So you don't sail against the current in the Bay of Fundy. I really wish these two sailboats were, were going at their normal speed. Because <laughs> I'm creeping up on them. Plus I'm also cheating, and I'm cutting the corner. And it always pays to look back. Uh, for a nice day, there's not, a, not as much boat traffic as there sometimes is. But this is what it looks like. You'll have a boat charging up right behind you. And there's, if, you know, if you don't know anything about boats, you'll say, oh my goodness, what do I do? Well, there's not much to do, except hope. And then they go charging by, and then you have to hold on, because they don't, they don't care if, you're, if their waves cause any trouble. They've already gone by. So, you're gonna see in about 20 seconds what happens. I'm gonna, I'm bracing my, my feet, I'm holding the phone with two hands, and here we go.
That one wasn't too bad. That was only about three three baubles. Three baubles worth of, of weight. But some some boats, oh my goodness. Well, you, uh, honey pot, you just get used to it. It's it's a fact of life. It's it's like a it's like having a black fly biting you. You you kind of can't do much about it because it's already happened. It's just the way it is. Um, so here we are back on the on the side with less less glare. And like I said, I like to. Uh, well, it's it's not exactly rude. Now the thing is, um, once you once you start to go down the intercoastal waterway, there's this much more of a uh, of an expectation that fast motorboats will pass gracefully um, because it's so narrow for most of that that trip. Uh, occasionally, there's a rude one. I can't believe I'm keeping up on these boats. Come on, folks. Have I had a, a lay day? Yes, I have. I've, uh, I've spent three nights behind Coney Island. Um, but I've also kind of made up for that by doing, by doing a couple long days. So I went from Coney Island to Atlantic City. And, uh, and for anyone else that's curious, Paul is someone that used to live in one of the places where I would stop. And I didn't stop in Manasquan, I didn't start, stop at Barnegat Light. I went to Atlantic City, it was a late day, 11 hours. I listened to the radio, someone's asking for diesel price. Um, so that's another thing, if you call someplace on the radio, you don't talk at the calling channel. You switch to the working, some working channel. Um, yeah, so anyway, I did a late day to Atlantic City, and then a, an easy day to Cape May at the southern end of New Jersey. And here we are today, and this is this is where you know had that long day pays off because I had a great day today, which is not always the case going up Delaware Bay. A little bit of a course change to the right. My uh, the first time I ever did this trip was in my other boat, which was slower, and and there was a pack of boats. And we're all going up Delaware Bay, blasting along with the current, and they all have their sails out, and they they turned their motors off, and they're sailing along really nice. And 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 the group had decided to go to a halfway point, so I said, "Oh, I'm I'm going to sail along just like them, and also go to a halfway point." Well, they all decided to go farther. Well, by then it was kind of too late, so I put the sails down and put my motor on, and by the time I got into this canal, I was. I was hours too late and the, the current was, was bombing out in the wrong direction and I was creeping along and creeping along and, and even closer to the rocks than I am now because the closer you are, you get a little bit of extra speed, the current isn't quite as much. And then a ship comes up to me, it's, a, it's like 8 o'clock at night, and a ship comes up behind me and calls on the radio and tells me, Skipper, your, your back light is out, I couldn't see you. Oh my goodness. So. I had to I had to work on that once I, I got settled at some point. And then I tried to go into a place, the closest place up ahead, I tried to go into it. And it was shallow and I'm, I'm starting to run aground. And, and somehow my dinghy got loose and I'm chasing it down and I snagged the dinghy. And I look up and I'm headed right toward the, the side of a steel dredge. So the choice was to let go of the dinghy and avoid a collision or to hold on to the dinghy and have a little, I wasn't going very fast, and have a little crash. So I had a little crash and it chipped the front of the boat. And, and I said at that point, I quit. So I tied up to this thing. It was a tiny, tiny little steel boat for, for dredging, the, the marina. They were sucking out the mud. And I think I need to turn a little more to the right because that other boat has done it. So I tied up to this little, little dredge thing and I had my dinghy and everything was good and then I called the place on the radio and they're open 24 hours. So I called this place on the radio just to tell them that I'm tied up onto the dredge so like they know there's a hazard there sticking out a little bit. And the guy on the radio said, would you please come in and register? Well, no, I can't come in and register. <laughs> I'm stuck, I'm gonna be stuck in the mud. What do you think? Come in and register, so forget that. So, so I had a good sleep. 
and the next morning was kind of a rainy day, but I had to leave. And just as I was getting ready to leave, a, a big, uh, slow moving, because they weren't in any rush, but a kind of a big motorboat went by, and they threw a bag of trash in my dinghy. Why would you throw a bag of trash into somebody's dinghy? I mean, yes, I was sticking out a little bit, but they got by. There is no reason to throw a bag of trash in my dinghy. Uh, the, the funny thing is, I met these people. I met, <laughs> very rude. Very rude. I mean, at least the trash didn't burst. So there is that. Um, and the bag was tied up and all that. But come on. You don't, you don't throw someone. You don't throw just because I'm sticking out. I mean, there's a reason I'm sticking out. It was an emergency last night. I'm in trouble. So, I, you know, they, they didn't, they didn't, you know, they went by through the trash and kept on going. And I met them later. And it was a nice couple. But obviously, they're also a bit vindictive. Um, I didn't mention the trash when I met them. There was no point. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. So, there's a little bit of a, a drama on my left. So, in the old days, if you had boat trouble, you'd call the Coast Guard and they'd come and help you. They'd either give you uh, gas, if you're out of gas, or they'd start your engine if your battery was dead, or if you're broken down, they'd tell you. Well, that's no longer the case. Now you either need to have insurance. You helped your brother take his 42-foot seahorse down to Chesapeake. Well, that's a good trip. I hope you had a good time. So if you're broken down now, there's, there's two main towing companies. So here's Towboat US, towing a broken down motorboat. And I suspect they're going to Philadelphia, which is about 30 miles away, because they had him on a very long tow. I'm trying to zoom out again, there we go. He's on a very long tow. So once they get out into the bay, into Delaware Bay, they can accelerate and get back to Philadelphia faster. Uh, there's only one other place you can keep a motorboat around here. Six-day cruise. Well, you went fast. You were in one of those fast boats. I'm jealous. So there's only one other place to keep a motorboat around here. That's Salem. And there's not too many places, not too many boats in Salem. Um, a lot of boats in Philadelphia. For obvious reasons, because it's a big city. I'm going to keep an eye out up here. Um, last year... Oh, it must be more than six knots. That was that was awfully swift. Um, a little more to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see how we do. So the train bridge is up. That's good. That's another good reason to be listening on Channel 13. Because you'll hear an announcement. Salem, that's me, the other coast. Yes, Mindy. Uh... You definitely do not want to live in Salem, New Jersey. Oh my goodness, what a what a what a dump! You, you can look it up. It has a it's, it's you know, six days to Myrtle Beach. That that makes a little more sense. Um, if you're only going six knots, you can't get to Georgia in six days. That's a that's a hell of a long trip. So the other reason to listen on Channel 13 is the bridge will make an announcement if it's going to close. Uh, they do know if there's any, uh, yeah, another Fort of Georgia, that's about right. Uh, the people that operate the bridge and the trains do know they have a way of checking if any ships are coming, or check boats, they won't close if that's the case. So when the canal is empty of, of big, big ships, then they know it's okay. The train will have to wait, and then the, they can put the bridge down. Now, unfortunately, the, this side of my boat has all the lines. It has all the, all the, all the junk in the way. I, I, I set the, my boat up on purpose that way. So I have the... Because I'm right-handed, and if you're walking up to the front of the boat and it's rough, what do you want to do? You want to hold on with your right hand. Hello, hello, I want to say hello to you. Clinton. Clinton. Hi, Clint. a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this is a funny sight. Two recumbent bicycles with flags going along nice and easy. It's, you don't see those too often. Um, 
this, I believe, is a dirt road. I haven't been on this particular section, so it might be paved. And it's high tide, but not high enough. I can't see. That guy just going along pretty fast, so maybe that section's paved. Yeehaw! So we're getting the wakes, the wakes from whatever just went by. Hang on. We're in a little, little procession here. And now I know, because I've done this trip many times before, now I know I can head for the, the left side of the train bridge at that point. And every time I do that, I gain a little ground on these two boats that tend to be hugging the right. And I'm doing the wrong thing. So I'm going to be doing the wrong thing. Anybody that works for the police better not be watching up ahead. Don't turn me in. My other boat was a lot slower, so it made more sense to, to cut every corner possible. Uh, this boat is not is, is, is a much better speed, and I still have this bad habit <laughs> of cutting every corner possible. So let's see, oh my goodness. So this boat normally goes at about 6.5 knots, and I'm at 7.9. So like I said, the tide just started to drop and I'm going to get going faster and faster and faster. It, I just kind of sound like one of those hypnotists that say you're going to get deeper and deeper and deeper. Listen to the sound of my voice. And then I'll make you act like an orangutan or something. Um, boy, that's really nice. Five and a half miles to Chesapeake City. And at some point, this scope is going to go dead. Um, I'm, I'm very surprised I still have a signal. I'm in a remote section. I just left. Uh, there's, there's no highway right, right around here. Well, no, there's no highway right around here, which is where you'd think the cell towers would be. So I, I passed Delaware City, which has a tower for sure. Uh, Chesapeake City has a tower, but I've never had too much luck. Sometimes I've had luck there, and sometimes I haven't with the, uh, the strength of the signal. The speed of the signal, two, three. Just want to cut the corner of that that bend. Um, up ahead here on the right, we'll see it in a little bit. No, I've turned too much. Two left. One, two. This would be nice to have a helper. The helper could steer the boat. Well, I scope from up in the front of the boat instead of having to stand back here. This boat came with uh, an autopilot that has a, a wireless remote control. Unfortunately, the signal, it's, its signal is too weak and, and it doesn't work from the front of the boat, where you probably want it the most. Uh, if there's a nice place, if this dinghy wasn't in the way, if I didn't have the dinghy on the deck, that's a nice place to sit up there. And you're away from the motor, it's quieter, you can hear the waves. Uh, but if your remote control doesn't work, then then you're sunk, so to speak. So here we are, starting to cut the corner, and here are these two other sailboats doing the correct thing, staying on the right. So I've been scoping for a while, and, and after this train bridge, off to the right is where I had my the mishap I was telling you about by running into a, a steel dredge and getting the bag of trash. It was a very long. It took it, it, it took it took hours to get to get from the end of the canal up, up this far, and it was very very very. You know, I, I've never been here before, and it's dark. Well, it was nighttime. I, I'm gonna say it wasn't dark. Because over here, every 500 feet, is you have a light. So commercial traffic can see the edges of the canal all lit up. Otherwise, you'd have to trust your radar, and you might not have working radar, so that's, that's very nice to have it all lit up. And what they also do is on the corners on these bends, they'll have a flashing light, so you know that something's changing up ahead. So if you've never been underneath a, a lift bridge on a boat before, and I assume that maybe nobody here has, uh, you have cables that go up from the... Uh, the end of the bridge, they go up to the tower, around some gigantic pulleys and, and a motor, and then down, and we'll see in just a second, 
Which side is better? Uh, this side is closer. So there's a gigantic counterweight. So it doesn't take much effort for the motor to lift this, this whole thing up and down. Because it's, it's perfectly balanced. There is some friction in the, uh, in the pulleys and the cable. So you can see, maybe you can see through the glare, there's a little building here. And that's what the, uh, the bridge operator does there. I'm guessing their eight hour shift. It's gotta be one of the most boring jobs. If you only have to do the bridge, you know, who knows if it even goes up and down once a day. Uh, but it doesn't go up and down much. Um, so you gotta sit there just in case the train comes. Um, I'm not sure if, if there's enough activity uh, for trains to need someone there the whole time. Some places you can, you can only put somebody there when you need them. So you can see this giant counterweight. Here's it on the on the other side, which isn't which isn't showing into the sun. And I'm looking back. No one's coming really. So that's pretty cool. Somebody's coming here, but they don't count. You can wave. I don't know what they are shouting. They're shouting something, everybody's happy. They've probably had lunch and a few beers. This is what I heard a moment ago. Yeah. Honey pot, would you like to go on one of those things? About 60 miles an hour. Is that your speed? That's a, what's known as a cigarette boat. I don't know why they call them that. They're not exactly round. And they big the yes. And they go like stink and make a huge racket and use up a lot of gas. So they're certainly expensive to run, but you do get where you're going rapidly. But the only, the only issue is, if it's at all rough, you're going to be bouncing like mad. Um, so you might have to stand up and take the shocks with your, your knees. So coming up to another bridge, uh, and after that I think is the pipe, the pipe bridge across the, the way, the more electric wires. And here's some people, I'm pretty sure this side, I, I have been down on this road, this side is dirt. Not, not too rough, but still dirt. Um, if, you've been, if anyone's heard of geocaching, this is one reason I've been down here so much. Ahoy, hello, ahoy, uh, Tim. Tim B. Good to see you, Tim. There's a geocache on both sides of the canal every tenth of a mile. So over the course of a couple of visits, I, uh, I've hit up a lot of them. Found a lot of them. One, two, three, four, five. I had a friend visit me in a car once, and she took me down, I think down to the train bridge is where we... Yep, well, technically I'm headed west today, but I'll be turning and heading south. Um, in a general direction, headed south. Boy with the geocache, Mindy. Mindy knows about geocaching. Um, so we drove down to that train bridge on the dirt road and started to get geocaches. And we looked at each other and we said, this is so boring. Let, let's just drive back a ways and, and do some up farther up and, 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 not, and like not do the whole thing because it was drive a tenth of a mile, open the car door, hop out, pick up the little thing uh, at the bottom of one of these poles, cover it up at the, at the rock. Yeah, I stop at Oriental. Uh, usually I stop in the spring because this time of the year in the fall, it's uh, it's too busy. It's crowded with people. Get into Oriental and if the free dock isn't free, if it's all, if they're filled up, then what? So I, I usually stop in the spring when it's not so, not so much uh, demand for the dock. So we pick up the little canister, the little geocache canister. I put my name on the slip of paper, put everything back, put it back against the bottom of the pole, put some rocks on it, drive, hop in the car, close the car door, drive a tenth of a mile. You get the drill? What's my draft? My draft is five feet. All right, I have to pay attention to my course. You see, I, I've crept up on these boats by going by going more, more, more straight, straighter, in more of a straight line than they have. And I think that boat in the back is a 41 footer. I think I'm recognizing it's tight. Um, 
that boat type sails like a dog. My friends had one. And, and they took, they had a three year plan to see the Caribbean with their 16 year old daughter. And it turned out to be a two year plan to see the Caribbean with their 16 and 17 year old daughter. And they ran out of money, so they had to come home. But they had a good time. And inside, that boat's very beamy. And inside is, is very nice. Lots of space. But it, it doesn't sail too well. Like a dog, those, those boats sail, or like a pig. They, they, they don't sail too well upwind. Um, but everything on a boat's a trade-off. If you have something, you've given up something else. So if you have lots of space, maybe it doesn't sail so well. Um, and that's what people have to decide on. They decide on what their priorities are. You'd be a pirate on a boat. Okay. Now I have to look this way. I need to see, I just did a little bend. And I need to turn a little bit to the left. I'm looking, I'm looking far ahead. There's a spider in my face. That's dropping down. I, I do not like spiders that drop down. Or even spiders that don't drop down. It's not that I'm scared of them. But some of them tend to bite. And I don't want to wake up in the morning with, with five spider bites. No thank you. So I like spiders on land, but spiders on the boat and I uh, have a disagreement. And they get the boot. Oh wait, no, here's the bridge. Here's the, here's the bridge with the pipes. Don't like spiders at all. Well, I understand. Um, spiders have their place. The, the place is not biting. Well, Mindy, Mindy, I'm, I'm on a boat. Do you think I can just go out into the woods and pick some witch hazel? No. When I wake up with a spider, with spider, I never just have one spider bite. It's like usually four or five on, on the bottom of my leg. In a small boat, no cabin, and no cabin in a thunderstorm. Well, the, the no cabin is a problem. You shouldn't have gone out in a little boat. But head, head for shore. And if you can't get to shore, then, then the best thing you probably can do is, is make sure your sails are down and put the anchor down and hope. Because if the wind starts to blow like stink, if the wind starts to blow like stink in a little boat, a thunderstorm, you, you better be anchored. So here's this interesting, uh, yes, full speed of the harbor. If you can be full speed of the harbor and get there in time, you, you're good. So here's, here's a bridge with a pipe, some kind of a gas pipe, I think. So the pipe isn't very big. It will, will, will tilt up as we go underneath it. And, and it's very interesting structure. The, the wires that are supporting it, because the pipe can't, they can't let the pipe move in any direction. So there's these wires coming from the side. Speaking of spider web, they look like a spider web. There's wires coming from the side to keep it from, from shifting. Not just up and down, but left and right. So how am I doing on my course? Oh, these boats. All right, we should we should take a we should take a bet. It's four miles to Chesapeake City. I might I might remember I might get cut off. I'm surprised I lasted this long. It's four miles to Chesapeake City. I'm doing eight knots. Who's good at math? How long is it going to take me? Come on, folks. Whoever puts the the answer in first is the winner. We're waiting. How long does it take to go go four miles at eight knots? Anybody? Any takers? Any math quizzes? Anybody that can, can do a quick calculation in your head? No? No? Everyone's uh, everyone here has been an English major. Or an art history major. Or a history major. So to go four miles in at eight knots is thirty minutes. Is eight divided by four is you know, four divided by eight is, is one half. So half an hour. So the question is, are these boats going to turn off in 30 minutes and go to the Chesapeake City? Uh, I would think not. The day is young, and there's another anchorage a little farther, just outside where this canal ends, and, and we're all bombing along. Um, and there's a lot of boats in front of me. 
do. There's quite a flotilla. I couldn't see them in person this morning, but I could see them on the on the. Uh, a, uh, Doug, if you went to marine traffic, you'd see it. But I have the equivalent here. I can see them in real time. And it was amazing how many boats were in front of me. Uh, let's see if they go. You want to get a little bit to the left? No, I'm going to stay in the center. Um, the Virus of New York, yes, look at my sort of my previous scopes. And just the other day I did a, a couple scopes going through going through New York City. It's one of my favorite places to go through. It's uh, the scenery is very different and, and 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 my speed is always faster than it than it normally is because the East River current. You have to time it right. Anybody coming? Yep, some big boats coming. So it's fun to go through New York, and and it's not rough in New York. It can be rough in Long Island Sound, and it can be rough off the coast of New Jersey, but it's usually almost, it, it takes more wind to be rough in New York. Um, I like hitting this canal when the, when the current's going so good. This is one of those, one of those perfect days. I had, I had plenty of wind this morning, but not too much. With all these boats going that way, I would make a strong guess that they've had lunch at Chesapeake City. One of the uh, marinas also has a restaurant, a huge outdoor facility, and some indoor seating. And it's a very popular destination. You pull up, it's called Dock and Dine. You pull up, do your eating and drinking, and then, and then go home. There's a big boat coming up behind me, so depending what he does, I'll get a little bounce from him. How are we doing on the uh, on the on the boats, the fast boats that are going slower than they should? It's very interesting. At least you have something to look at. Um, you know, lo looking at this would be be boring after after a while. I, d I don't mind looking to see. I like the scenery. I like going through here. Um, it's, it's not unusual for Delaware Bay to, to have beaten me up a little bit and to get off and out of that rough, rough stuff and have this nice current and calm. It's just a joy. I think this bridge was repainted in the last couple of years because look how, look how blue it is. Oh my goodness. Somebody liked blue. Holy, holy moly. So they do repaint bridges occasionally. You can see on the, uh, the the concrete support that there's been rust dripping dripping down. So they'll they'll cover it up. They'll cover up a section with, with a lot of canvas and put the sandblasters to it. And when they get to the section up here, they have to of course cover that up with canvas and a work platform. So there'll be a, a notice that the bridge is, is temporarily lower than it should be. Now for, for us little sailboats, that doesn't make a difference. But the uh, the Queen Mary 2 is a tight fit. So they have to make sure, and obviously the Queen Mary 2 wouldn't be coming through here, but, but certain things do come pretty close. That guy didn't wave. That little bit of a bump. It's one thing to go into the waves, so like this is one, two, three, and it's over with. It's, it's not quite as nice when the waves come from the other direction. This is what we'll be having in a few moments. So I think that train bridge that I went under used to be at a lower position, but they, they re-engineered it so that it would go a little higher because certain, certain ships had to pass underneath. Ships have gotten bigger. I went, it's still me. Are we still here? So someone send me a heart and say we're still here. Anybody? Am I talking to? to yep. Oh, thank you. Thank you, whoever's red. Uh, Honeypot. What color are you today? You ready? Red. Okay. Red is better than brown. Hey. Okay. One, two, two to the right. Yep. So I'm headed, headed for. Here we are, coming on the wrong side, and. And this is where there's a little bit of trouble. Oop. An old Everwood motor. Uh, this? This is not an Everwood motor. This is, oh, a, it's, I think it's a Yamaha. 
uh, what the previous owner did, we can walk over to it, what the previous owner did is on purpose made it ugly with spray paint. Yeah, it's a Yamaha. Aha. Yeah, I was right. So that's how it's supposed to look. But he made it ugly with, with like gold, gold spray paint and, and sprayed it, sprayed it gray on this side. And, and the theory is that a thief doesn't want to steal an ugly motor. They'd rather steal a, a nice shiny one, a new looking one. Well, turns out this motor, I think I found the year. I think, I think it's pretty old. It's like, like it's, it's 10 or 15 years old. One of, my, uh, one of my little projects this spring was to get it working properly. I, I don't have any use for a motor. Uh, I, if, if I use the dinghy, I'm almost always rowing. Uh, in my other boat, I tow, I would, the boat was smaller, so I'd tow the dinghy the whole trip. This, this boat can hold the dinghy on the deck. And I didn't stop in Manasquan. And my friends, my, I have a friend in Manasquan. And, and because of the situation, even if I did stop, I wouldn't, probably, probably wouldn't launch the dinghy and row ashore because we're not going to see each other. Um, there is a little grocery store in Manasquan, so, so that's, that's one reason to launch it. Uh, there's another place I, I would use the dinghy. Uh, last year I was lazy though, and the other place I would just pull my anchor up and drive in for half a day to the, the free dock. I think I used my dinghy once last year. Um, and just rowing. It's so much easier. Um, so I, I got this, that, that outboard. It came with the boat. It also, it also came with a rubber dinghy. Obviously, there's no rubber dinghy here because I, I, I rolled it up, took it off, and it's, it's wrapped up in the garage. And I hope that, that animals don't bite it. Now, our rowing's easy, as long as you don't have to go very far. So just for, I, just for fun, I tried that motor last year on this dinghy, and, and it, had some, it ran, but it had some issues. So I said, this spring, I'm going to, to, to deal with it. So I got it, got it working. I had to take the carburetor apart, and a piece, a very strange carburetor, a piece inside the carburetor was loose and had fallen off. So I sort of cleaned everything out, a little too close to the rocks, and then I found there was the fuel tank had had a had an issue with rust. It's a plastic fuel tank, but there's a there's a steel. Steel, there's some in this plastic cap on the top. There's some steel wires that keep the cap from falling out when you unscrew it. And the steel wires had gotten wet and caused rust. So I had to replace the cap and had to clean out the tank. And that was all good. And then there's a little rubber impeller that when the motor's running, it spins and it pumps water for cooling. Game Fisher 13, rowing is great, thank you. So I had to take the bottom of it off, the part with the propeller came off, and I found the, uh, the little rubber thing, I think it had five, it was supposed to have five veins for pumping, and two of them were missing and broken off. Uh, so I keep the, I keep, I have, so I have this outboard motor, it, 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 it was running fine this spring because I fixed it. It took a little while, I had to send for some parts from the uh, boat store. Oh, a little bit of wave action. Hang on. Um, so I have that motor, but I also have the motor that I bought like 20 years ago. And that's also in the garage. So I don't need two motors. Um, so next spring, I'll probably take that, I'll probably take this motor off and, and get the other motor and, and fix it. Um, its carburetor has been sitting a long time. And I don't think I've ever changed the little rubber thing that does the pump pumping action. And that's all. It, it's not hard. It's just, just a little bit of work. It's all pretty straightforward. If you know what you're doing. If you've never done it before, it helps to have somebody show you. Um, so I can see the bridge in Chesapeake City. And we still have a signal. You have a Yamaha 250 four-stroke. Uh, is that 250 horsepower? 
Yeah, if you're the 250 horsepower, I think your definition of cheap will be several thousand dollars. All right, we have to turn left. Two degrees left. I'm, I'm slowly working myself back to the correct side. Away from that, the wrong side. So we're now we're down to two and a half miles to Chesapeake City. Uh, the way this canal bends is I can see the, in the very, very far distance the bridge just after Chesapeake City that gets you over to Chesapeake City. And then we're going to go around the turn here on the side of it. This is the last time I checked my distance, it was four miles, now it's two and a half. And I still wonder if these boats are going to turn left or if they're going to keep going straight. We'll know soon, but, but I'd be very surprised. Oh, well, the thing is, uh, what's the power of that? Yeah, it would sink the dinghy. Uh, I'm checking my course. A little bit more to the left, one, two. So what's, what's the strength of this dinghy, this, this dinghy motor? It might be, it doesn't say. I think it says, it says on a sticker. Straight to the bottom. Yep. Well, you know what though? I probably could put that, I probably could put your heavy motor in the dinghy. That, my dinghy is a lot stronger than you think. Which directions they go? No, that's a that's a three. I believe I believe it's a three and a half. Just going by memory. Uh, the trouble with this this big fat head, the four this four stroke is, is takes up more space on the top. Well, unfortunately, you can see the back of my dinghy has a little slot. That little see that little black spot. So the outboard goes there and the head fits inside the, the gap and you can't turn it all the way. It's, it's designed for, for the back of the dinghy that goes straight across and my, the back of my dinghy doesn't go straight across, it, it, it dips down. There's, there's two kinds of possible outboard motors, one is longer than the other. This, is the, the lo this, this one's the long version and my other motor is the short version. So I have a, a notch in the dinghy to accommodate the shorter motor, which I used to use occasionally. Um, I used to, if I was staying at Star Island for a while, I would put the motor on the dinghy. It was just easier. Um, but then one of the guys that worked there, I'd see him in the morning rowing out, and, and he inspired me to, to stop using the motor and to just row, um, which worked out great almost the entire time. Uh, there was one night I had supper, it was getting late, it wasn't dark, but it was getting late, and I went down to the dock after dinner, and I was going to row back, but oh my goodness, the wind has come up. I tried to row, and I tried, and I'm going, going lickety-split, and like getting, getting nowhere really fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, to the right. And thank goodness there was somebody Somebody was at the dock talking to a friend, and the guy at the dock was in a rubber dinghy with a motor, and he said, would you please take me back to my boat? I need a tow. So if, if he hadn't been there, I would have had to walk back up to where I just had dinner and, and try to find somebody. There's only, there's only a couple somebodies that could help me. Um, of course, they're on the island somewhere, you just don't know where. So I wouldn't have been <laughs> it just would have been a longer, longer night, so I got a tow. Um, but that was the only time that that I needed a motor and didn't have one. Um, but that's all right. That's that's what you know. Every now and then, life throws you a curveball. Oh my goodness! And here, here are these guys. Come on, put the coals to it. They shouldn't be passing you. It's a big fat boat. And, and earlier today, they were going faster. But they might be saving. They might be, so, so to speak, saving their engine. See, I'm, I always run it full tilt, not not not, not completely wide open, but I, I run at cruising speed. I'm not. I'm, I'd rather get to where I'm going and stop than than to. You know, diesel engines are strong. There's no reason to run them slow. And this, of course, you have the wrong propeller. And that's a different situation. All right, I have to turn a little bit to get past that next point. One, two, three, four. Anybody coming? I haven't checked recently. 
I'm very happy there's, there's usually a lot more activity in here on a, on a nice weekend like this. Uh, like those cigarette boats that you saw, uh, those are much more common. Now it might be the case they're all still having a late lunch and drinking and hanging out and so later in the day they'll be blasting back to Philadelphia. Sunset is sunset is at 6.30 so it, and it gets dark at 7. Doesn't, there's not much twilight anymore. Um, so yeah, you can run you can run the Delaware Bay up to Philadelphia in the dark, but it's it's easier if you don't. Oh, that's cute. Some little kids they're taking a pause, and some little kids like finding treasures in the rocks. That's so sweet. Here I am coming up. Now I'm going to do my my illegal keep to the left again. So I'm going to gain some ground. They're sleeping. Any for the, is is there a night game? I don't know anything about. What do I know about sports? All right, look, looks like I'm on a good course. I go left, just one or two. I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to the radio, but I haven't heard any any calls by ships. So the uh, the canal that goes through Cape Cod, if you call them, they'll say this is uh, like. Canal control. So, so you know who you're talking to. When you call this place, the answer is WB33. Well, if you're, if, if you're some newbie, if you're not a commercial pilot, you don't know what WB33 is. Why doesn't the guy just say this is canal control? Well, I haven't. you haven't heard my horn because I haven't tooted it. Um... I don't think there's any need for a horn in these circumstances. I've been scoping for what feels like 45 minutes and maybe longer. And I haven't overtaken them yet. Plus they can see me. And here's his boat number two charging up on the back of boat number one. I think he might have put the power to it. I don't know what happened there because they were going along together just fine. And now this boat number two is, is doing a very good job of passing. Not that there's any drama here, it's just somebody either sped up or, or slowed down or who knows what's happening. But at least it gives you something to look at. The uh, So when, when you're farther south, uh, a, a motorboat will be coming up in, in a narrow section and, and they'll call ahead and say, southbound sailboat by marker 66, can I have a slow pass? So the, slow, the sailboat that's already going kind of slow will, will cut its engine to idle and start to slow down. And the motorboat that's going fast will cut its motor and start to slow down. And if you all do it right, it, it glides by without much act, without, without leaving a big wave. And then once it's passed, the motorboat speeds up, the sailboat speeds up. So you hear on the radio a lot, can we have a slow pass? Well, here is a slow pass, but I haven't even passed them in 45 minutes. Ridiculous. So there's somebody calling the place that's on Marina, and also uh, a dining facility. So I can turn left here, one, two, three, four, five. There's a little motorboat coming. I don't want to turn left too much. Well, I do want to, but I'm not going to. Oddly enough, the place I just heard on the radio, it's called Chesapeake Inn and Marina. So it implies that it's a marina and a place to sleep. Well, it is a marina, but it's not a place to sleep. It's a place to eat. And that's the, one of the biggest, uh, biggest places for, for dining there. Chesapeake City is minuscule. And it's one of the biggest places, it probably is the biggest place for going out to have a, have a, have a lunch or a dinner. Alright, a little bit of wave action, one more to the left. One, two, three, four. So, over the years this canal was, was narrow, very narrow to begin with. And then it got expanded to its current size. Um, so Chesapeake City was built back when this, uh, I think this canal had like, five locks. And Chesapeake City was like a base for the construction workers 
and one of the locks and the uh, it was the highest point in the canal so in order to, to keep enough water at the highest point they'd have to pump it from from the lower section of the canal and the uh, the steam engines and the wooden cattle wheels that, that lifted the water back up are still still there and you can go visit when uh, when when life returns to normal there's the museum this the tree you just walk in and walk around it's uh you can see everything pretty pretty much in 30 minutes or 45 minutes two three four degrees left but it's cool that they preserve the old uh, all the old equipment and you just walk up to it and see it all right haven't looked back recently oh nobody coming so the thing is once i pass chesapeake city all those people that are going from having had their lunch and their drinks to Philadelphia are over. So even though there has been some boat traffic, there should be even less on the other side of Chesapeake City. Yes, 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 Batman. Welcome. I'm really surprised the scope has held up as long as it has. Um, I really thought the signal would cut, cut off by now. So here's our little parade, little parade of boats. I'm trying to figure out what if I should turn or not. You know, I'm, I'm good for a little bit. So I, I am creeping up on this boat with the blue stripe. There's, there's no doubt about it. So I'm going, I'm going a shorter distance in every bend. Um, and he was almost hitting that other boat. Now they're separated again. So something, something's going on there. But I'm getting, I'm getting pretty close. Let's see, how's my speed? 8.2, one mile to Chesapeake City, which is seven minutes and 19 seconds. Actually, the, uh, I think the waypoint, let me think, I think the waypoint might be the bridge. Pull up new cell towers. Well, this is, this is still fairly, fairly, oh, 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 look, look, there's a spider. Whew. Not anymore. Um, no, there you, I missed him. There, I got him. Sorry, little guy. Um, this is this is the countryside. Yes, there is Chesapeake City, and it's called a city, but it's it's more like like a uh, it's more like a little village. It's tiny. Um, I don't think they're adding cell towers now. Not too far away is the highway, but it's like 10 miles away. So any towers for the highway wouldn't wouldn't be helping here. So what you've got is what you've got. I don't think they they're adding too much. And over on this side, I, I've, I've been out in this direction by car, and it's extremely countryfied. Um, not too far away in that direction, there's a lot of famous horse farms. You have to be a little careful here. So if this guy, you could probably, you, no, no, you, you didn't look at the property in Chesapeake City. You can't be serious. You might have looked at property in Chesapeake, Virginia. Uh, oddly enough, this is Chesapeake City is is a huge uh, tourist place in the in the better, warmer months, and property prices right in in the little spot are, are higher than they should be, just for the because of tourism. Um, but you go into the countryside, you know, right around here. Right around here, you know, prices aren't going to be that much. Not as much as Chesapeake City. But these are just regular houses. A lot of the little houses in Chesapeake City, uh, interestingly enough, you could buy a house from the Sears catalog in, in the late 1800s. Yeah, it was definitely Virginia. No, no doubt about it. Chesapeake, Virginia is a vast metropolis. It covers many, many, I'm going to say many square miles, but I should say many square kilometers. Well, no, this is Chesapeake City. Chesapeake, Virginia is, is a different, sta different state, and it's also not called Chesapeake City. It's just called Chesapeake. Um, because we're coming up on Chesapeake Bay, it's not unusual to have, <laughs> have, have, have the name get reused a few times. See, I want to go off to the right, and this boat is keeping me from going off to the right. I'm 
see in the back of it and it says Cheyenne. And the only Cheyenne that I know of is in Wyoming. So this might be their first trip. Um, the people they were traveling with, this boat, might be their boat buddies. Uh, both of these boats were well, well in front of me all day long. And then they kept to the right instead of going to the left by a substantial distance. So that tells me they're not familiar with, uh, with where they were. All right, now they're turning. Good, now I can turn. I asked for 10 degrees. There's the auto. This autopilot is wonderful. If you ask for a large course change, it, it doesn't oscillate, it doesn't oversteer. It creeps up to what you asked for, and then you're bang on. Even when it's really rough, it, it does a good job of, of keeping up with, with rough seas. Two, three, four. So, because it's Halcyon, that's the name. Of, if I can see what the name of this boat is, Halcyon. And because they're, keep, they're all keeping to the right, that gives me the idea that they're not going to be turning in. I'm going to after this bridge. I'm going to scope out because I I do know that the signal will pass. Anybody coming? Nobody coming. You also uh, you also lose the view. So as I go by the entrance in a few minutes to Chesapeake City, I can maybe see how crowded it is. The, uh, the basin they used that was part of the, uh, the lock system was also designed to, uh, as a little, little spot to stop. And so it's a good anchorage, it's a good stopping point, except this time of the year it's going to fill up. There's probably boats in there anchored already, and there's more. A Halcyon years ago. What were we doing in Alaska, Mindy? Um, and I know there's more boats behind me. I could see a whole bunch on, on AIS, and then there's ones that aren't on AIS. So there's all, all you know, people that are arriving late, they're not going to be going as far as we're going. They're going to try to go in there. And I've been in there. Oh, by the way, here's the, uh, here's the museum. This is the old steam. You can see the chimney. There's, there's two, two steam engines that giant, drive giant paddle wheels. Mid-80s. What were you doing in Alaska? Were you one of those um, flower children or something? Did you go up in a, in a VW camper van? And then get on a boat. So there's a free dock, which is full. It only has room for three boats, three or four boats. And the... And the there. It looks like a little tour boat's there. And I want to turn more to the right, but yet again, I'm being kept, kept to the left. I'll turn a little bit. And then here's Chesapeake Anna Marina, and there's a huge cloud of, of, of exhaust coming out of the kitchen. And I can't see how, how packed it is, but... Um, I'm sure it's packed with people who are not wearing masks. That, that seems to be kind of par for the course. So, farewell to Chesapeake City. I want to turn right a little more. Um, this is a... So, when you are in a ship, the canneries... Oh my goodness, Mindy, you're quite the, the character. So, so, when you have a ship and you're going up and down Delaware Bay or Chesapeake Bay, it's mandatory to have a pilot. And this is the halfway point. So this little orange boat will, will depart with... Oh yes, here's, here's another place if you want your seafood. Here's your seafood spot. So that little orange boat will, will drop off the new pilot and take on the... the, the yeah, drop off the new pilot, take off the old pilot as they're changing regions. As you're leaving, leaving New Jersey and Delaware and you're going into Maryland and... So the, uh, oh my goodness, what's happened here? Look, look, all of a sudden, there's motorboats everywhere. This is what I usually see in, on the other side of this bridge. So I expect the signal to cut any minute. But oh my goodness, what's going on? Everybody's coming from the other direction for a change. And this is why you want to stay to the right and not just jill around in the middle. Lobster crabs. Yeah, Mindy's buying. Maybe that guy's going over to the fuel dock. 
Well, come on, folks. Don't don't plow down the center. I want to get to the left, I guess. You, what you don't see is what's happening over here. The, there's a whole line of them in the distance. Plus this guy plowing down the center. And oh, yeah, here's somebody just scooting along. Another somebody scooting along. Holy cow. This is what happens on a nice day. Everybody wants to eat. They want to drive somewhere in the boat. Because because winter is coming soon enough. At least this guy isn't blasting along. He's starting to slow enough. Surprisingly, that boat has a, a Joe Biden Biden flag on the front of it. That's pretty funny. Can't eat blue cloth. And the, there's a little more wind here. Whoop! The, the camera gets flashed. And here's this little uh, little parade. One, two, three, four, five, six coming and there's a seventh one that's barely barely going along how am i doing here um eight point whoa wave action 8.3 knots so i've run into a little bit of wind and the wind's going against the current and there's a little bit of wave action from that plus all these motorboats and then the waves hit the rocks on the sides and holy cow you start start doing this kind of thing See, even that bigger boat's doing it. Plunging. So I'm hanging on to I'm hanging on to my grab bar. You don't want to slip and fall on a boat. Not that you're gonna fall out, but there's a lot of sharp edges. And I love, you know, this this doesn't happen too often, but I love how my my viewers are talking amongst each other. That's great. It's kind of fun. Oh my goodness, now I'm getting around the corner. So I counted six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's a parade. I can't slow down. You'll have to, you'll have to hold on to your stomach. Should have put a patch on. And this isn't rough, this is just a little bouncy. But notice how all these boats, all, all these boats, farther in the distance, are in the middle. Come on, folks. Can't you see there's, there's like three of us coming at you? Pull over. At least they're all spaced out. You know, not all motorboats go at the same rate, so it's not unusual to have, have, have one boat passing another, or, or one boat passing another, which is being passed by a third one. So here we have the Delaware Responder for oil spills. This is a, an Army Corps of Engineers uh, base. So they have a few uh, commercial vessels. And it looks like a, a dredge. Now I'm paying attention because here's, here's some motorboats. Let's just go down the middle. Let's not keep to the side. I'm, I'm purposely not going to the left like I would like to. Because of all these crazy people. Three, four. You get to look at that. Here's the, uh, I'm so surprised, this is usually the quiet section. So speaking of like boats passing boats, here's this big one bombing along. You know, you can get there a little more safely, just take it easy guys. Even, even the two cigarette boats are saving their gas. So I'm going to get whacked. No, I think he just slowed down. He slowed down for three of us. So not getting whacked. One, two, three, four, five, six. Of course, there's some jet skis, and what they want to do is probably bounce around in the waves. One, two, three, four, we turn a little more left. I'm really surprised the signal's holding up. So here's, here's the Halcyon, who I'm still slow passing. It's only taken me an hour to get to this point. And I'm really busy looking, looking over on yeah, that, that was a real surprise. So like this guy here, you know, don't, don't go half speed. Boats that go slow are fine. Boats that go fast are, are, are better. But if you go half speed, then, then you leave kapow. The biggest wave you can leave is at half speed. And people think they're doing you a favor by slowing down. 
No, no. See this little boat going fast? That's okay. If you slow down to half speed, then your wave doubles in size. So honey potty, you ready to drive a boat? You ready to drive a tractor? You're adventurous. One nice thing about boats is, at least sailboats, is, is things don't happen too fast. You have time to think. Anybody coming? All those people going the other way. They're all going to have to go home tonight. But I'll be well out of their way by then. Alright, I'm still surprised I have a signal, but I know it's, it's going to die very soon. Look, oh, here's someone going fast. Yeah, we'll give it a go. I bet you'd like to try one of those too. Those, those things probably are fun, but, but to anyone that is near one, they're annoying as all get out. So this is the end of the scope. I, I know for sure that my signal cuts out up ahead. I, I'm getting into very... I don't even have a signal at all. Okay, we're going to let you off. You can hop off on those rocks over there. So up ahead, my signal completely goes. I don't have a signal at all. Zippo. So, so honeypot, you can tell, uh, you can tell Donnie that if I'm not around, that's why, because I've, I've gotten into some, some pretty countryside, but no cell towers, um, at least for a few days. So everyone, thanks for, for keeping me company for quite a long time. This has been a lot of fun, and we'll catch you all next time. Have a good afternoon, good evening. Um, good to see you all popping in. Take care.